Hello everyone, this is Amit. I welcome you all in the video lecture series of the subject Operation Research. This is our fourth lecture related to the chapter Assignment Problem. In this particular lecture, we will study about Travelling Salesman Problem. So, let us start our discussion with few notes related to the Travelling Salesman Problem. So, moving to our next slide of discussion. So, what is travelling salesman problem and what are the some important notes that one must keep in mind while solving the problems related to the travelling salesman problem. So, the first note says that the salesman must visit city only once and come back to its starting point after the completion of all the other cities that are there in the route. For example, there are five cities. So, for example, the starting point is your first city, then he has to visit all the other cities once, then and then only he can come back to its starting point. So, this is the first note. Whichever the cities are given or whatever the routes are given, irrespective of the starting point, for example, if the starting point is 1, then he will have to visit all the other cities that are given to him and then and then only he can come back to its starting point so this is the first note then there are two additional constraints that one needs to satisfy for solving the traveling salesman problem uh, in the previous <coughs> lectures we had seen about some special cases in assignment problems such as maximization problem unbalanced problem then in our second lecture we had seen about minimization case that was solved using hungarian method so here also Hungarian method is applicable but here two additional constraints has to be satisfied and those constraints are first constraint is that no city is to be visited twice before the tour of all the cities is completed. So what, what has been said in the first note that is same thing is been said over here no city is to be visited twice before the tour of all the cities is completed. Then second, con second constraint is going from I city I to directly I is not permitted, which means CII CII stands for unit cost of transport uh, unit cost, and that is equal to epsilon or that is equal to in infinite block same city to same city means for example that you can understand from the below table the tabular form of the traveling salesman problem is given over here this CII is equal to infinite that means you cannot move from one city to city one so wherever the same cities are belonging there you are supposed to put infinite from one to one it is not possible from two to two it is not possible from three to three it is not possible so this is the general tabular form of the traveling salesman problem it, there are to city and from city so from which city to which city that salesman has to travel that is in this tabular form and according to the second constraint going from city i directly to i is not permitted so blocking same city to same city from one to one it is not permitted from two to two it is not permitted from <coughs> three to three it is not permitted so traveling from city to city same city to same city is not allowed so these are the two constraints that one must keep in mind and cyclic cyclic route you are supposed to find out the cyclic route so this is all about general notes related to the traveling salesman problem for your better understanding we have taken one example so let us move towards our next slide of discussion in which we have taken one example related to the traveling salesman problem next slide <clears throat> so this is the data that is given a school bus wants to pick up students from five different areas a school bus wants to pick up students from five different areas there are five areas from where the school bus is supposed to pick up the students and cost in rupees of going from area to another area is shown in the table find out the optimal route find out the optimal route such that no repetition of area comes before picking up the student from all the areas. So this is the table that is uh, given to you in the data. 
there are five areas from which the students are to be picked up by the school bus and uh, the cost of picking up the students in rupees that is given in this table so here you can see in the table from same city to same city it is zero means that is not permitted from 1 to 1 it is not permitted from 2 to 2 it is not permitted from 3 to 3 it is not permitted from 4 to 4 it is not permitted and from 5 to 5 it is not permitted so let us start uh, its solution so the first step that will remain same that we had uh, solved for all the other examples related to the assignment problem so the first step is to develop an opportunity cost table so first step sub step in that for developing the opportunity cost table is row reduction so we will examine each and every row one by one as we had done in our previous lectures and then we will complete uh, row reduction and we will develop a new table then second sub step is column reduction so moving to our next page of our next slide of discussion so this is the table that uh, we had obtained table 1 is related to the row reduction table 1 is obtained after the row reduction so uh, you can see from previous slide here all the values means throughout the diagonal we will put infinite symbol because that is the constraint that one must keep in mind okay, from same city to same city one cannot go <coughs> and you can see from the first row the smallest element is 20 so subtracting it from all the other elements so this is infinite we had put to, uh, through the diagonal now as for the data given in the main table that was shown in our previous slide the smallest value in the first row was 20 so subtracting it from all the other elements so these are the values that you will obtain 10 40 60 and 0 so this is how the row reduction table is obtained by doing the row reduction <coughs> new table is developed similarly this table 1 is used as a reference to obtain the column reduction so for column reduction and uh, you can see in the first column there is already a zero element that is present so there should not be any change in this first column so that column remains as it is similarly for the second column there is also a zero present so that column will also remain as it is coming to the third column uh, you can see yes there is the smallest element that is 10 so subtracting it from all the other elements and subtracting from itself also so subtracting 10 from 40 will give you 30 10 minus 10 0 infinite that will remain as it is 20 minus 10 so that is 10 and subtracting 10 minus 10 it is 0 <coughs> so there is a change in this third column similarly fourth column is also having an uh, 0 element so that column will remain as it is fifth column is also having a 0 element so that column will also remain as it is so moving to the next slide next step step B or step 2 making an assignment so the table 3 is written from the reference table 2 that was obtained during the column reduction that whole table is rewritten over here and we will do the assignment so starting with the row examination uh, uh, starting with the first row if you find single zero then make an assignment so you can see over here this row 1 is having a single zero so we had done an assignment I have assigned the zero and other zeros belonging to that row or that column is crossed out because as per the rules each row and each column should have only one assignment so if there are other zeros that are present then you should cross out those zeros to avoid any conflicts similarly coming to the second row there are two zeros actually one zero is crossed out and remains single zero but as, but as per the rules you can say there are two zeros so we will skip that row because there are two zeros coming to the third row you can see there is only single zero so i have done the assignment to that zero and rest of the zeros belonging to that row or column should be crossed out but in this case there are no zeros coming to the fourth column there is also one single zero so i have done an assignment over there and <coughs> moving to the fifth row there are two zeros so we have skipped now we have examined each and every row now the turn is to examine the column one by one so starting with the first column there is single zero so i have done the assignment in that column and other zeros belonging to that 
column or row should be crossed out so this is where i have crossed out coming to the second column that is already assigned coming to the third column now there remains only one zero because this zero is crossed out so you can do assignment over here and now you can see okay, each row and each column has one assignment so as per the condition to obtain the optimal solution that each row and each column should have an assignment that is satisfied but the additional constraint for this traveling salesman problem is okay the route should be circular <coughs> and let us check that the, that constraint is satisfied or not so for this traveling salesman problem the additional constraint is that that the route should be circular circular route should be followed so you can see for the first route or first area you can see the assignment is in fifth now whichever the last value you have obtained over here you are supposed to see that that the assignment of fifth belongs to which then you can see one is assigned to five and five is assigned to one so here the circular route is not followed because there are other areas that is supposed to be covered and then and then uh, that particular bus can come to the starting area here starting area is one then it goes to fifth area and again come back to first area so the second area third and fourth are not included so as per the constraint it should follow the circular route so to satisfy that what are the things one needs to do to satisfy that constraint that is shown in our next step here the solution is not for the traveling tsp stands for traveling salesman problem because other areas are not covered other areas are not covered because it goes from first area to fifth area and from fifth it goes to again first area so second third and fourth areas are excluded so we cannot say that the circular route is followed so for that we will have to go through the C, uh, step c using penalty method so here we will find penalty of all the zeros and that is shown in table 4 so this table 3 is again rewritten and we will find out the penalty of all the zeros so moving towards next slide of discussion so this is table 4 that the same values we had obtained during the table 3 that is written over here and now we will find out the penalties of all the zeros so this is very important how to calculate the penalties of all the zeros so starting in the first four finding out the penalties of all the zeros each z uh, sorry each row and each column must have one zero to find out the penalties if it is not available in any row or in any column then for that particular row or for that particular column subtract the smallest element from itself as well as from all the other elements such that you will have one zero for that particular row or for that particular column so to calculate the penalties of zero each row and each column must have at least one zero to calculate the penalty so you can see from this fourth table every row and every column is having one zero so now starting with this first row there is single zero so how to find out the penalty so this zero this zero's penalty we need to find and the penalty is shown at the top of that zero now you can see in this first row the other smallest element is 10 and in this zero zero belongs to fifth column so in that particular column the second smallest element is also zero so doing the addition of these two uh, row smallest element and column smallest element so in these first row the smallest element other than 0 was 10 and in this fifth column the second smallest element other than 0 was also 0 so 10 plus 0 that's why it is 10 so the penalty of this 0 is 10 coming to this all the zeros penalty we will have to calculate coming to this 0 finding out the penalty so in that second row there is uh, smallest element that is 0 and in third column the second smallest uh, in third column the smallest element is also zero so zero plus zero is zero now coming to this zero to calculate the penalty 
the smallest element is zero this zero and in this column it is zero so zero plus zero is again zero now coming to this zero to find out the penalty smallest element other than zero is 30 and in this column 70 60 and 60 the second smallest uh, sorry the smallest element is 60 so doing the addition of these two 30 plus 60 will give you 90 and coming to this fourth uh, row the penalty of this zero can be calculated by the smallest element other than zero is 10 and in that particular second column the sec uh, second column the smallest element is 10 so 10 plus 10 is 20 so this is how the penalty of this zero is calculated and that is 20 now for this zero the smallest element is zero and in this column the second uh, sorry in this column the smallest element is 40 so 0 plus 40 will give you 40 so the penalty of this zero is 40 now calculating penalty for this zero the smallest element other than zero is a zero and in this column the smallest element is zero so zero plus zero will be zero so now we have calculated the penalties of each zero that was belonging to table four and you can see this uh, third row and fourth column there the zero was present and it has the maximum penalty and that is 90 so whichever zero has the largest penalty that row and that column will be deleted that means assignment is done in that particular so it is belonging to third row and four column so we have done the assignment in third and fourth third goes to fourth assignment of third is done with the fourth area so now moving to the table 5 in next table we will have to delete this third and fourth third row and fourth column so this is the reduced table now putting all the other values that is as it is and putting the value uh, infinite where this 3 and 4 belongs to so you can see already 3 row is del deleted but here fourth row is present and third column is present so third and fourth once you have done the assignment in 3 to 4 so for same assignment cannot be done that's why here it is epsilon you cannot do again assignment to 4 and 3 because that has been already assigned over here so 4 and 3 wherever they are matching there you will have to keep infinite so that same assignment will not be repeated all the other values will remain as it is and again calculating the penalties of all the zeros so starting with this zero uh, the smallest element other than zero is 10 and in that fifth column the smallest element is zero so zero plus 10 will give you 10 calculating the penalty of this zero smallest element other than zero is zero and in this third column it is zero so zero plus zero is zero in this fifth column smallest element is zero and in that second row the smallest element is zero so zero plus zero is zero coming to this zero the smallest element is zero and in this fifth first column the smallest element is 40 so zero plus 40 is 40 and coming to this zero's penalty smallest element other than zero is zero and in that column also the smallest element is zero so here the penalty will be zero now as per this question zero with the highest penalty that will be assigned and that will be deleted when we redraw the table in our next step so here the assignment is done it can be said that the assignment is done in fifth and one so five belongs to one that is shown over here so in our next table number six this fifth row and first column will be deleted that is in our next slide so this is the reduce table in which fifth row and first column is deleted all the other values remains as it is 10 30 0 0 0 0 0 infinity and 10 now where you find 1 and 5 there you are suppose here in the reduce table when you draw 1 and 5 that remains so here you should keep 
infinite because the same assignment cannot be done so we will keep infinite over here then now remains from the previous table 30 and 10 so that row does not belong that row does not have any zero so to first thing that you must keep in mind that using penalty method each row and each column must have single zero so there should be single zero so to obtain that subtract 10 from itself and 10 from 30 so it will become 20 so reduce table will be 0 20 and infinite this is infinite all the other values are as it is now similarly in the same way calculating the penalties so for this first row the zeros penalty is the smallest element is 20 and in this column it is 0 so 0 plus 20 is 20 calculating the penalty of this row uh, the smallest element in this column is 20 and in this row it is 10 uh, sorry it is 0 so 0 plus 20 is 20 calculating the penalty of this 0 smallest element is 0 and in that column the smallest element is 10 so 0 plus 10 that is 10 calculating the penalty of this 0 so the smallest element in this row other than 0 is 10 and in this column it is 0 so 0 plus 10 it is 10 so this is how the assignment is obtained here there is tie among the penalties you can select any but I have selected the first assignment Go first one is assigned to second area so that row 1 and column 2 will be deleted in our next table and wherever you find 2 and 1 here it is not now one column is not present so there is no need to put infinite so first row and second column is deleted now second row all the values that remains as it is that is again rewritten now you can see from the table 6 this much are the values that remains 0 0 infinite and 10 so you can see in column uh, sorry you can see in uh, row 4 there are two elements infinite and 10 but as per rules you should have one zero at least one zero to calculate the penalties so subtracting that 10 from itself so it becomes zero so now you can calculate the penalties of all the zeros so here the smallest element for this zero in that column is infinity so we cannot consider here it is zero so zero plus zero is zero calculating the penalty of this 0 the smallest element is 0 and in this column the smallest element is 0 so 0 plus 0 is 0 and here also smallest element is 0 so 0 plus 0 is 0 so here again there is tie you can select any assignment you can select this 2 to 5 also but I have selected second one is assigned to third so we will delete second and third second row and third column that shows that second is assigned to third now remains four and five so at last four will be assigned to fine so now you can say that all the constraints are satisfied for the traveling salesman problem so this solution gives you optimal solution along with circular route is also followed so starting point is irrespective here you can see from table four first assignment was three is assigned to four so our starting point is 3 then fourth was assigned to fourth was assigned to here 5 so 4 is assigned to 5 5 is assigned to 1 1 is assigned to 2 and 2 is assigned to 3 so starting point is irrespective it is not necessary that it should be first point only here it is third point our starting point is this so to reach that third point it has to visit all the other areas that is four five two and one then and then he can come back to the its starting point that is three so he have visited now fourth fifth one two and again he can come back now to the starting point that is three so now putting the values of this cost in rupees from the main table for third it was assigned to four so from the main table you can see third assigned to four so that is 50 similarly all other values are obtained from the main table 60 20 30 and 40 so by doing the addition you can see that it takes 200 rupees if it visits or it pick up the students in this particular pattern 
so this is all about traveling salesman problem i hope it would have helped you to understand traveling salesman problem thank you